hi guys welcome today in this tutorial we are going to work on the timer as a counter so first of all let's create a new project so go into the C directory and our FSDK examples and here go into the peripheral and uh, copy the timer and go back into my projects and paste it here and let's rename it as then go into the timer and open the PC F10040 because we are using an RF52832 go into the blank Sagar embedded studio folder and open the EM project file First of all, we are going to delete all of this extra code. Let's uh, remove this uh, main code. And we will see how we can make this to work as a counter. Uh, everything remains the same. So here we have this timer, which is the instance of uh, timer zero. And uh, here we have the handler. And this is going to be an empty handler because uh, the interrupt is never generated for the timer as counter so uh, we are not going to use this interrupt but we have to pass a uh, interrupt handler so we are just uh, going to make some empty interrupt handler and then pass it so the next thing we need uh, is we have to remove this code let's remove this code and uh, we don't need the timer takes counting so we will remove this as well okay let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it clearly after configuring the timer as a default config the next thing we need to do here we will use this timer config and we will change its mode so timer config dot mode and now here we will mention the timer as a counter timer mode counter so now our timer is going to be configured as counter so right now everything is same we just need to change this we have to remove the comparator we just need to change this code and uh, it's all set up and now our timer works as a counter let's remove this first so what happens in the counting mode is uh, uh, our respective channel is incremented by the help of any event or we can manually increment it with our software for example we are doing some stuff and we need to count that and uh, we can just uh, use a simple function to count it manually so to increment the counter we use this function and our effects it's just going to increment the counter in the channel so using this function we can increment it manually so we can use some other software techniques and uh, then we can increment it let's see how we can uh, read the timer value so for example this counter has uh, some value after uh, incrementing the counter we need to read read the value let's create a variable so and let's initialize it with a zero now we will use this variable now we will use this function to capture the value here we have to mention the channel so let's go with the channel 0 and that's it so basically what it's doing right now is it's just uh, incrementing and then uh, saving this incremented value in a variable so this is the manual method and let's see how we can see this value so we are going to use the printf and in the printf we will use this and we will pass in this variable to use the printf we need to uh, enable the logger and uh, I'm not going to use it uh, via UART port I'm just going to use the RTT so go in the SDK and click right click here right click on the SDK config.h and open the CMC's configuration wizard and in this wizard go in the NRF log and uh, click on the NRF log enabled and click select this and uh, save it 
so now our log is enabled we can see this in the debugging mode and uh, the second thing is we need to include the nrf delay because uh, if we just use this and it's going to be too fast uh, and uh, we won't see anything we are going to use the nrf delay function to add the nrf delay i think so there is the library is not here nrf delay so we are just going to include it so right click on the library and uh, go to add existing file and then we are going to go in the nrf sdk go in the components and uh, then in the libraries you can find the delay here and uh, click on the all files click on this file nrf delay dot edge open and uh, one more thing to do here is we need to add the folder otherwise this file won't be able to uh, otherwise this compiler won't be able to read this file so right click on this project not on the solution make sure you click here right click here and uh, go to the options and then go here in the release and change it to common and then go into the preprocessor and here you will see this we can see here a small button here click on this button and now we need to add the path for uh, as you can see all the path has been already added but uh, delays path is not added here so we need to add the delay path and I'm just going to copy this all because it's same path for the up till the components and let's see if we go into the C and our FSDK example uh, sorry an RFSDK components and then we go in the libraries and in the delay so we have this we will just copy this and paste it here and make sure don't use the backslash okay so now it's done and click on okay okay and now we need to include it so hash So now let's add the delay here and let's say after one second it's going to print out the counter value so what's going to happen is it's going to increment the counter value then it's going to save that value in a time well and then it's going to print that value after every one second and uh, how we are going to see this we are going to see it through Sager's RTT library uh, via debugging mode so let's build this code first okay guys once uh, this code is uh, built and uh, click on the target click on the connect and make sure your device is connected and uh, click on erase all and then download this code once the code is downloaded uh, we can see that uh, we can see the counter being incremented via the Sager's RTT library and uh, to uh, see the output uh, we are going to go in the debug mode click on the debug and then click on the go so once we are here we have to start the execution so click on the play button to start the execution and here you can see the counter value is incrementing by one every time every second it's incremented by one and uh, you can see here we are manually incrementing the counter and uh, we can see uh, we are just saving that value in this time well variable and then we are printing it and uh, all this code and the cheat sheet will be available in the description and uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you like this video hit the like button and uh, and uh, that's it for today thank you very much for watching see you in the next video